service? Yes! It's math time. Yes, so look what we have here. It's father and son. Let's go fishing, Dad. All right. <laughs> hey, looks like we're having a good old time. Woohoo! What are we doing today? Ooh, there's that word. Algebra. That's right, lesson 1.10. Woo, we're getting near the end of the chapter, chapter one. Yeah, we had some great lessons, and now we're moving into the topic of numerical expressions. Yeah, numerical expressions, I love those. Yes, I do. I do, and we have an essential question, and our essential question states, how can you use a numerical expression to describe a situation? Ooh, cool, but, but Mr. Wara, don't we need to, you know? That's right, we do. Unlock the problem. That's right, my friends. It's real world, baby. Real world. Real world. Now, it says a numerical expression is a mathematical phrase that has numbers and operation signs, but does not have an equal sign. <laughs> I know. You like my little emphasis there? That's right, my friends. Remember, if they ask you to write a numerical expression that you do not, should not, should never, no, write an equal sign. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at our problem. It says here, Tyler caught 15 small bass and his dad caught 12 small bass in the Memorial Bass Tourney in, oh no, how do you say that word? Tidy out, tidy out, Pennsylvania. Okay, I did my best. Write a numerical expression to represent how many fish they caught in all. Very cool. Okay, it says choose which operation to use does say you need to join groups of different sizes so use addition and that's a nice key to let us know that we're adding in this operation because we have 15 small basses with the amount that Tyler caught he outdid his dad right who caught 12 but they are asking us how many fish they caught in all that lets us know addition so 15 small bass plus 12 small bass is what we're going after and that means that expression we're not looking for an answer here that expression is 15 plus 12. That represents how many fish they caught in all, okay? Not 15 plus 12 equals 27. No, because that's not what we're looking for. We're just looking for that numerical expression. Okay, cool. Let's go down to example one. Example one says, write an expression to match the words. We look at the first one, A. It says that Emma has 11 fish in her aquarium. She buys four more fish. So we can represent that little scenario those words little mini paragraph if you will with 11 plus 4 because there's 11 fish and she's adding four more she's buying four more fish therefore we do have those different quantities we're going to add those so we're going to put 11 plus 4 that is an expression now on b it says subtraction lucia has 128 stamps she uses 38 stamps on party invitation. So she used some of those stamps. Therefore, they're no longer going to be part of that group of 128. Therefore, we're going to subtract. So stamps used, right, 38. That is our expression, 128 minus 38. Again, we're not looking for an answer. We're not asked to evaluate. We're just simply asked to write an, an expression to match these words that we're reading. Now C, notice these are all different operations. For C, we have multiplication. It says Carla buys five books. Each book costs $3. So that expression to show that amount of money, here we could just say, well, sure, we have our five books. That's gonna be multiplied because we're, we're using the words each book costs $3. We're not adding $3. We're trying to show a numerical expression that will show what that quantity would be if we had five books at that cost, and that would be five times three. That's how we would do that. For D, now we have division. So four players share 52 cards equally. Well, it's telling us the cards are 52 because that kind of is our dividend. That's our whole amount. And they're going to be shared equally with, in this case, four players. Now it says, math talk. Describe what each expression represents. And each expression is going to mean different things because for like for A, that expression represents the number of fish that she will have in her aquarium because she went to buy four more. The numerical expression for B is, the, is going to represent the number of stamps that Lucia will have left. Okay, multiplication, that represented the right total cost of the 
five books. And then D, division, that's going to represent how many cards each player is going to get. Very cool. Okay, I like this. Move on. Yeah. Okay, now we have expressions with parentheses. Okay, the meaning of the words in a problem will tell you where to place the parentheses in expression. And you guys know parentheses are these just wonderful things. Okay, to have one of these, I guess just one of these brackets right here, would be a parenthesis, parenthesis. But we have two of them, it's plural, so we call them parentheses. Oh, I'm learning how to spell. Oh, no! Ah, hey, Mr. Wara, you need to be neater. You're so sloppy. Okay, there we go. All right. Now, example two. Which expression matches the meaning of the words? Now, it does say over here in the nice little blue shaded box, underline the events of each day. It also says circle the number of days these events happen. So let's read this first. Doug went fishing for three days. Each day, he put $15 in his pocket. At the end of each day, he had $5 left. How much money did Doug spend by the end of the trip? Okay, cool. So we need to underline the events of each day. So definitely each day, he put $15, right, in his pocket. So I guess I could underline that. And it does say at the end of each day, he had $5 left. I don't know that. I guess that would be each day too, would be. And then circle the number of days as events happen. So since he was fishing for three days, I guess we would need to circle this. Okay. It's just kind of helping us identify in the problem. And it does say here, think. Each day he took $15 and had $5 left. Okay. And he did this for three days. Moving down. So we have $15 minus $5. Think, what expression could you write to show how much money Doug spends in one day. And it shows the $15 that he has, right? Because that's how much he put in his pocket each day and he always had $5 left. So we could show that expression $15 minus $5 to show how much money Doug spends in one day. Cool, I guess we don't really do anything here, right? Okay. And over here we have the three times, okay? Because we have that $15 minus the $5, so just think, what expression could you write to show how much money Doug spends in three days? And with that three times would represent the three days. Explain how the expression of what Doug spent in three days compares to the expression of what he spent in one day. Well, I guess a simple math talk here would just be, it would be three times. It would be three times as much because if he's spending, it's just to compare the expression of what he spent in one day He's going to compare that with three days. So three days is being compared to one day. There's your word compare. So that would be, yeah, it would be three times over the three days. Okay, I think we're good there. So that was just kind of a practice problem, I think, kind of okay. So let's look at example three. Which problem matches the expression $20 minus the sum of, this is how we say the sum of because we have parentheses, 12 and 3. It says, Kim has $20 to spend for her fishing trip. She spends $12 on a fishing pole. Then she finds $3. How much money does Kim have now? So we're gonna list the events in order. It says first, Kim has $20. Okay, next what happened? She spends $12 on a fishing pole. Okay, so I guess we could write that spends $12 on a fishing pole. Then, uh, look, it says she finds $3. So we'll put fines, $3. Do these words match the expression? Well, I'm going to say no, they don't. Because if you look at the expression, we have our $20. Okay, and we're subtracting because she does spend $12. So that's true. We'd want to, spending money means that we're going to subtract. And, and that's a good thing. So we're subtracting here. Well, we're going to subtract in the $12 and something else but it says she finds three dollars and to suggest that she finds three dollars means that it's being added to what she had she found now had she lost three dollars then we could say that yes then this would be true because twelve dollars that she spent on the fishing pole right here and then the three dollars that she lost and then together we would subtract that from the 20 but that's not what the problem is saying it's saying that she finds three dollars so no that doesn't match let's look at the next one kim has twenty dollars to spend for her fishing trip she spends twelve dollars on a fishing pole Look at that's exactly the same. So we'll rewrite that. And then it does say here and ooh and three dollars on bait. So do these words match the expression? Yes, they do. They do match because now we have two spending situations. 
meaning we're subtracting $3 on bait, we're subtracting the $12 of the fishing pole. These both need to be subtracted from the amount of money that you had from the beginning. Where this, this is where we noticed that $3 on bait was a spending subtract. Here she found $3, that was an adding. Okay, and that was one of the difference. So do these match? Yes, they do. I hope that works for you. Works for me. Yes, sir. Now we have our good old Sharon show. If you have your math board, get it out and let's have some fun. Because math is fun. It just is. There's just no other way to say that, in my humble opinion. Yes, so circle the expression that matches the words. Okay, I like this. Terry had 18 worms. She gave four worms to Susie and three worms to Jamie. She gave, like she gave away, gives away. Now that doesn't mean the expression just means to be subtracted. She had 18, okay? Now here in this expression, we have the difference of 18 and four, and then we're adding the three. And then here we have 18, and then we're subtracting the sum of four and three. Yeah, I'm going to go with this one right here. I hope you were thinking the same because she had 18 worms to begin with. Here, it's not really saying that. It's saying she has, what, 18 worms and she's already subtracting four worms. And then this is what's kind of messing the whole thing up here is then she's adding three worms. And that's not what's happening. What's happening is we're taking the four worms she gave to Susie and the three worms she gave to Jamie. We're adding those worms that she gave away and then those will be subtracted from 18. Okay, cool. Good job, you guys. Hey, <laughs> give yourselves a high five, you know, in the air, you know, by yourself. I'll give myself a high five. Anyway, Rick had $8. He then worked four hours for $5 each hour. Okay, wow, okay. So let me understand this. He had $8, and then he worked four hours for $5 each hour. So it sounds like to me that he already has a certain amount of money, and then he's adding money, but it's being multiplied because it's each hour, it's per hour. When we start using that word each hour, per hour, or per something, it usually means we're gonna be multiplying. So we need to multiply the number of hours by the $5. And I can just look and see, this one here looks like that's happening. Four times $5. Okay, we don't have that over here. They have the four, which isn't even the $4 times I'm sorry, being added to the $8. That's kind of confusing. So we're adding a money with something that's not money, and then we're going to multiply that by $5. Very confusing. So I'm choosing this one right here because I already had my $8 according to the problem. So that needs to be added to. Remember we talked about it? If you have four hours, we need to know how much money would he make if he was making $5 each hour for four hours. Now, it's not asking us to solve this, but we could solve this. This ultimately would be, yeah, he'd be making $20 here. And then you add that onto the $8 and look at that. Now we know how much money he made together. But that's not what we're doing. We're not solving in this lesson. We're just showing what a numerical expression is. And we're actually matching it with the words here. That's all we were supposed to do. Cool. Yes, I know. The music's a playing away. Oh, it's another end of a math video. Woohoo. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I mean, oh, more like. So sad, right? Because the video's come to an end. I know. It's just how it is. Now, let's have some fun. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, you are. You're really getting crazy. I know. Oh, that was so much fun. Yes. Okay, my friends. Now, live long and prosper.